Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us uh, today. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I'm, I'm uh, really fortunate to be here in the uh, Hyperledger Global Forum. This is my first time attending it. Um, and uh, another reason why I'm excited is like, uh, we are presenting our one of our top products, Edge Data Management, today, powered by OneLine. Before I get into the application of edge data management, I would like to share a few words about uh, our OneLine. OneLine is, is a suite of products that we developed in BombBlock in order to tackle some of the um, biggest problems in supply chain management today. And uh, predominantly, right now, you, we have uh, four products in OneLine. Uh, as you can see, edge data and traceability to uh, track, trace, monitor, and manage your shipments, orders, and uh, you know, edge data variables around that. Wismo Tracker is a delivery engine status, the delivery status engine that we have, and uh, business process alignment uh, to take care of all your transactions and invoices. Right. But more on these applications, you know, later we have our booth in S5. You can please stop by and uh, you know get more information. But today is spotlight is on edge data. So um, what are we trying to do here? via edge data, you know. Uh, in today's cold chain shipment, as well as uh, supply chain management, we have a, you know, predominantly a lot of issues, but uh, predominantly product loss due to um, variation in temperature, humidity, things that we can't really control, you know, uh, um, causes a lot of uh, issues with product loss, and uh, how are we tackling it, you know. And in certain industries like pharmacy, the pharmaceuticals, uh, those, those product losses, if not monitored properly, actually become becomes unsafe for consumers. You know, uh, a lot of pharmaceutical companies are shipping medicines, and uh, if they are not properly monitored and uh, maintained in right temperatures, it uh, becomes unsafe for uh, consumers to consume. So, and uh, again, in in shipping industry, uh, certain fluid levels, uh, tankers, you know, gas tanks or depth fluid tanks needs to be maintained in uh, above or below a minimum requirement in order to maintain the smooth flow of the process. Otherwise, the business and, and there, it creates delays and, and things like that. All right. So how does Edge Data address these issues? You know, we, we have a solution for you via Edge Data. So Edge Data uses sensors to track, trace, and report you know, um, data from your edge nodes like temperature, humidity, air pressure, um, even fluid levels. And uh, there are m much more um, other variables that we're trying to include, like sound and other stuff. Uh, you can implement these sensors in your trucks, warehouses, uh, storage units, uh, and uh, even go as granular as a package. Uh, package level implementation has also been done. And uh, so what you can do is, you know, this ensures that your product is is being monitored and maintained in the right temperatures or, you know, right threshold values. And you can, you know, essentially ensure that your product is maintained in the right quality before it reaches the consumer every single time. Right. And there's configured alert workflows that you can do in the application, which notifies you pretty much if there is any breach in the threshold values. You know, it's not being maintained in the right uh, temperature or humidity. There's a lot of humidity going on, you know. Uh, things like that, you will get notified real time, either way, text messages or, um, you know, emails. Uh, the application consists of several pages. You know, the, the dashboard gives you a quick snapshot of you know active number of devices and, and alerts and and uh, what's the current reading of the devices that you have you know, implemented. And the store view is a retail page. You know, uh, uh, designed in, in uh, to keep in in keeping mind um, the retail store users who want to see all their sensors in a by a location basis um, and set up device and fluid management allows you to see your your data from those sensors in the way that you want you can configure however you want and you know um, set up those thresholds the alert management allows you to pretty much configure the way that you want to get notified or the people that you want to notify in case of any issues that happen uh, and blockchain page just shows how we use Hyperledger fabric, you know, how we store the sensor information in the Hyperledger fabric in order to maintain the immutability and the security um, of, you know, of the application of, of which this entire thing is built upon. 
All right, without further ado, let's dive into the demo. All right, here we are, landed in the dashboard. So um, as you can see on the top, you know, we have several cards indicating how many devices that you have right now. I just um, you know, brought four devices to the uh, convention, so uh, four active gateways, and what are the alerts, temperature alerts, or device failures that is going on. And uh, on, the, on the left-hand side, you can see a bar chart of a uh, uh, number of alerts that has been generated over the past seven days you know, for temperature, humidity, and gateway failure. And on the right-hand side, you can see a list of current readings, you know, how many of these readings, you know, um, uh, sensors that I've looked, deployed in different locations and what's the current readings coming out of these sensors. Um, as a, also, it just quickly shows, you know, if, if these readings are supposed to be in their right thresholds, you know, those alerts that indicate that, the, oh, these are not the correct uh, threshold, uh, you know, the temperatures that they should be maintained and it should be probably lower or higher, you know, uh, just indicating that they're uh, in alert. And at the bottom is just a quick cache of all the issues that we log in, um, hyper, you know, um, in uh, edge data in order to work on that and, and uh, provides you with the status and who is it assigned to. Next, the store view page. This is the page that I told you, you know, we dealt with keeping retail stores in mind. Um, here you can see all the sensors that you have deploy, deployed in, uh, the loc in various locations of yours. Doesn't matter if it's a store, tro storage trailers or route trailers, you know, which are going into shipping um, and uh, warehouses even, right? So uh, with the click of a button, you know, I, ca I can currently see the temperatures, you know, what's the temperature that is going on and, and it looks like my free freezer is, um, you know, higher than what it's supposed to be. Probably someone, you know, left the door open or, um, you know, my sensor is not put in the right place or something like that and it indicates uh, uh, alert as well. So if we see here, uh, my thresholds uh, are, you know, supposed to be from negative 15 Fahrenheit to 10 and uh, clearly current temperature is 28 degrees Fahrenheit and that's why, you know, it's in a alert state. There's an alert, where, you know, uh, being generated. And uh, similarly, you can see the humidity and uh, air pressure values. And you can definitely, you know, right now I have uh, selected a warehouse, you know, uh, that I chose for the demo, but uh, you can uh, go ahead and choose, you know, a storage trailer that's currently running around. And, and uh, at the bottom, we provide a quick list of issues or alerts that has been generated over the past, I don't know, however many days for this particular location. It seems like storage trailer has been, you know, running into a lot of issues with the humidity and temperature breaches because they, by just open and close the doors often, they have to unload and load the products, right? So, and of course, um, this page, you know, uh, keeping in mind that, you know, these retail users, sometimes they're uh, in America, um, predominantly speak other languages. So we also offer, you know, translation properties where, you know, you can pretty much switch all the values um, of, of these, uh, of this particular page into Spanish and back into English. Next, uh, device reading page. This is this is a page that I, I personally like, uh, not just because I developed you know uh, most of it, but also because this page pretty much provides you with literally all the data from all your sensors, and uh, including hum temperature, humidity, air pressure, and what time it came in, where from, and all that, right? And it allows you to filter, sort, and custom search from this data also. You know, I can I can go back as you know as long as past three months and and uh, you know bring data in within seconds. I can filter it. I can export it for my purposes. Make presentations. You know, give it to authorities in case uh, if I want to get it validated and you know show the proof that I'm maintaining my freezer at the right temperature. And uh, device analysis page, uh, we provide interesting insights on how um, you know. Uh, these temperatures are uh, once we get the data. So right now, if I click on the storage trailer that I have, uh, I we quickly provide the, the historical readings of all, you know, that particular trailer, that particular location. And if I click on the graph, I see how the temperature has been maintained over the past 
uh, 24 hours. By default, 24 hours, but of course, we have the from data and to data. Again, you can go as long as past uh, three months so that you know you can bring in the data. So right now, let's say I'm gonna go. I'm gonna choose um, just a couple hours of data. So where is the time? 12. All right. If I see that, submit. So the only correct, you know, uh, I, this was supposed to be a cooler, and I, I wanted the temperatures to be clearly, you know, between uh, below 40. But right now, I, it seems like I took it out, so it's in uh, it's in a higher temperature, and and uh, everything else is indicated as alerts. It's not in the right uh, threshold it needs to be, so uh, it's an alert, and. Uh, yeah, you can pretty much print and export these details for your presentations as well. Next is alert workflow. Uh, here's where you can create your configured workflows in order to get notified. Uh, the beauty of this is you can create workflows um, as higher as a location level for all your sensors or granular as a sensor level. So um, if I have like freezers and coolers in a, in a store, I can con configure freezer uh, temperatures and um, you know, uh, cooler temperatures. Or if your store just contains uh, purely uh, you know, coolers, then you can maintain um, all the sensors in one threshold without having to you know, manually create 15 uh, alert workflows. right? And the configured, um, I mean, not tiered notification system allows you to uh, get notified in, in um, you know, in response times. As in, um, if if a breach happens, I want my you know uh, store workers to get to know about it first before I hear about it because you know I don't want to get. I'm I probably I'm not you know in the store. I'm managing multiple other stores. You know, so um, tiered notification allows um, you to get notified the store user, and then if they are not responding to the the alert uh, after like within the stipulated timeline it gets elevated to the manager or uh, so on and so forth to the to the highest level authority and you can enter your phone number um, to also include text alerts so if, you know if you have an on-duty phone or you know I just want to see how many alerts I'm, am I getting in you know these stores so you know I can uh, enter my phone number as well to get notified And alert log page, here's where you get you know, the list of all the alerts from all the sensors you deployed in your locations. Um, it's, a, you know, let it be a temperature breach, gateway failure, you know, a humidity breach. Um, so here I have one, uh, the, the sensor 12 that I told you about is, is supposed to be a freezer and it's just, you know, in a higher temperature. So here it just shows, you know, the temperature alert has been generated, you know, for 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you can, you can, as soon as, you know, an alert is generated, a person who, you know, is on site, who chooses to, you know, work on it can assign themselves or it can automatically, you know, assign a person who was on duty and uh, pretty much log their work right from here so that, you know, your boss doesn't have to call you every single hour to see, hey, what's going on with the freezer, you know, like it's still open, you know. So they can just log in and see that, oh, it's being taken care of. And, and uh, if the issue is, you know, takes multiple minutes, you know, if it takes a long time to get uh, fixed, they, they can just stop the notification from going higher level um, while the, you know, issue is being, being taken care of. And finally, we have the ledger page where we show um, how uh, these sensor readings are being stored in blockchain ledger, uh, Hyperledger fabric. Uh, we, we take all the sensor values, you know, uh, the temperature, humidity, air pressure, we store those core values in um, fabric and we retrieve them to show it in the application. So maintaining the mutability and security of the um, Hyperledger, extending it to the entire application. All right. Um, that's all I have. Uh, thank you all for attending the session. Uh, we have more information on other products in our booth S5 on the on the third floor. So, if you want to, you know, get to know more about the other applications or even talk more insights about this application, I'll be there. My team will be there. Um, you know, looking forward to see you all there. So, uh, yeah, please reach out to me. All right. Thank you.
So uh, pretty much we. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can use one channel, one node, and and start you know using the application. Um, if you want, we, this application also supports multi-tenancy. So if you have multiple um, uh, customers of yours that you would like to include in this application, you can set up multiple channels in the fabric itself to in, in, in include them. No, one channel per application. The user. Um, so if I look in as a different user in the application mm -hmm. on the same channel, mm -hmm. so uh, as a user I can see also the data of another user. Okay. No, it depends on the entity. So if you're belonging to the same company, same entity, yes, you can see the same sensors. If you are a part of a different company, let's say company B, I'm not able to see uh, the sensors and data of this company. So that's an entirely different channel. Yes, two different channels, depending on, on in the entity, as I said. You know, if it's a company with having multiple retailers, you know, we can have set up channels or we can set up an entirely new different organization uh, to store the data. Do you work with uh, uh, the fast fashion center for business? No, but um, I would love to answer your questions. I think I'm running out of time. But uh, yes, please uh, come upstairs or we can talk over lunch and uh, I'll be happy to answer your questions.